a really common thing for businesses to ask for when developing applications is to be able to audit changes to their data. Traditionally, this has been done using a bunch of triggers, but there's a better way. Let's mash on that. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. In today's episode, we're going to pretend to be the SQL monsters and learn a little bit about databases. Uh, so I, I should preface that by saying that I do not know any SQL so, or SQL, so probably just turn this off right now. But anyway, uh, what we're going to talk about today is uh, building an audit table. Now, there's a lot of ways to do this. What I have done in the past, uh, dating back many years, is to build a bunch of triggers on the table to catch every insert, every update, and every delete to the table and kind of lock it out to some data store somewhere, uh, typically like the same name table with the word underscore audit in it. Uh, but there's a better way of doing that that doesn't involve triggers and it's much easier to set up, and that is SQL Server Change Data Tracking. Um, I, I, should, I should make sure that I have the right name on that because there's actually two different uh, tools, one of which is called Change Data Tracking, and one of which is... This one called set. just Change Tracking or CT. Yeah, change data capture, that's it. So it's change data tracking and change data capture. Uh, so we're going to be using change data capture here. Change data tracking just tracks that the data has changed. Change data capture captures the, the values of the data as it goes through the system. So what we're going to need is a fairly modern version of SQL Server. I tried this on whatever I used to have installed on this machine, which I think was 2016, uh, and I didn't have much luck with it. I think I could have got it working, but it was a little twiddly, so I upgraded to 2019, and that seems to be working nicely. Uh, so to start with, we just need a table to, to play with. So I have a convenient table built here called people. Uh, so we've gone built this table. It's just a standard table. Like, there's nothing special about this. You don't have to change the, the way that you're building your table at all. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is we want to enable the change data tracking, and that has to be enabled in two different places. So the first off, it needs to be enabled at the database level here. So this will enable this entire database to have change data tracking or change data capture. Uh, it will not enable it on a specific table. It's just enabling this on the database itself. Uh, so this is where stuff would have gone wrong on my 2016 attempt. All right, so we have that enabled. And next, we're going to enable it for our people table. That's done with another stored procedure. And what we give this one is we give it a source schema, which is database owner. We give it a source name, which is going to be people. So this is uh, like the schema, and this is the table. Uh, and we're going to give it a role name of null here. You can give a specific role name, you probably should in real world scenarios, uh, to restrict what people can see the, the change data tracking. Uh, but we're just going to give it null here. We'll go ahead and run that. And this one can take a moment to enable because it's creating all sorts of stuff in the background. All right, so that has gone and built itself up there. And now we can try putting some data in there. So I have conveniently created insert statements for a couple of things to push into the table. Uh, so we're pushing in names and people's weights in kilograms, specifically people's weights from Oliver Twist. <laughs> All right, so there we go. We've inserted our four rows into the table. Uh, and we can start taking a look now at what is in the change data tracking. So I'm going to copy and paste this query just so I have in everything else because it looks a little bit complicated. So this uses uh, table valued functions. So it kind of uh, queries a function, which is like a virtual table. 
Uh, so it's a little bit complicated to set up, so we'll go through it here line by line. So the, the first thing we do here is we're going to declare these LSNs for the beginning and the end. So an LSN is a log sequence number, which is just like a sequential number that gets incremented every time we do something in the database. I, I have to admit, I never even heard of it before looking at this change data capture. Uh, and then we're going to ask for what the first entry is in the people change data tracking, change data capture. So we basically just wonder what is the start of time for this? So it's possible that this is an existing database, it's been around for years, uh, and we don't want to go, or, and we've just enabled this at some point. So we just want to go back to the first record here. Uh, and then we want to end at whatever the most recent possible change is here. Uh, and then we're going to query that from this function here, and then that has this appended onto the end of it, which is uh, the name that we used up here. Uh, and we'll just go ahead and run that. And hopefully it should come back with, there we go. So it's come back here with the four rows that we added. Uh, so the, the key piece of information here that you want to look at is the operation here. Uh, and different numbers here to know different operations. Insert is two. Uh, so let's go and maybe update some of the data in this database and we'll see what happens. So we update all set waiting. A little bit of wait. ID one. Okay. And we take a look at the people table. Oh, we can see that indeed that weight has been updated here. And if we go back over and take a look at this, we can see now that we have this operation number four, which is an update, telling us that the, this first row here now has a weight in kilograms of 26. So if I want to go back to the previous value, we just look for like the, the value right before it here. Hmm. Neat. Yeah. Uh, so one of the problems that I have with this is this start LSN is not really useful. Like if you're trying to communicate to people when this <laughs> data was changed, just giving them this kind of number here is not super useful. Yeah. Fortunately, there is a way of transforming that. So there is another function here that we can use. Yeah. So function CDC map LSN to time, uh, and then we can give that this. And this will give us a much more reasonable sort of thing here. So now we can see that oh, much better. specific times of the database has been updated. It looks like cool. it maps it down to my local time zone even. So that's fun. So the it's a little bit, like you said, convoluted looking at it, but I mean you wouldn't have to write these queries very often. You could put them in a view or do something to make it easier to get at this data so that you're not writing that query every time. Yeah, that's definitely the, true. The output is sure sure useful information to have. I'm a little bit curious about where this stuff is. I don't know if you can open up your object explorer there. Sure. And I if you go to oh, we don't see the that info here. I was just curious because it said it uh, started up some jobs. Oh, oh yeah, you do. You have the SQL Server agent there on that ins on that uh, local yeah. host. So I'm wondering oh. under jobs, then yeah, yeah there, there is. Go. There's a capture so. and a cleanup. Cool. So I noticed that that's just kind of named per database instance, so it doesn't look mm -hmm. like it's specific to uh, that one table. Mm -hmm. uh, I did have this connection here actually open to Monsters demo on an Azure database. Uh, and it's interesting to go and try and enable this on that database. So just open up a new query window here. This is like the latest and greatest SQL Azure. Uh, and if we run it here, we can see there's a problem that this mm -hmm. uh, version of the database does not support change data capture. Uh, so you can get around this by using a managed instance of Azure SQL. Uh, 
I don't know if this is something that's going to be enabled or if this is like a feature that you've specifically decided not to enable. I suspect um, it has something to do with the fact that they're using those jobs and that that's not something that's there. Yes, you're probably right. Uh, so there are other ways of doing this like with code in your applications. But, mm -hmm. uh, if you really truly need it, then yeah, a managed SQL instance will work fine in Azure. Cool. Super useful. All right, great. Well, that's everything I had. Uh, so uh, we'd like to invite all of you to uh, like, comment, share, and um, I don't know, maybe fax this episode to your best friend. Uh, preferably in a way that you like print it out on a loop and then just like loop it through the fax machine so it keeps going and going until they run out of paper. <laughs> All right, we'll see everyone next time. Bye.